Hey guys, Eddie the Magic Monk. We're now up to lesson eight with object row modeling, which is really cool, and I hope you are as excited about it as I am. So, out of all the CS diagrams we have drawn, we're now going to add one little thing to every single relationship. So basically, we got to make a choice. Okay, we got to make a choice to decide where to add a straight line on this relationship. And I'll explain to you um, what the straight line means. So let's go back to representing the information in a table. So let's say we're recording the gender of each of the students. Okay, let's say we have Edward is a male, Phoebe is a female, Sarah is a female, James, is a male and so on and after we draw the conceptual uh, schema diagram to represent that we'll get something like this where we have student has gender and what I want you to do is I want you to look at this table and you're going to tell me which of the columns has unique values Okay, now let's have a look at the first column. Do any of the values repeat? Edward does not repeat. Phoebe does not repeat. So this column here has unique values. Whereas this gender, we got male repeating, right? We got female repeating. So therefore, this is not unique. Right, this column is not unique. So, because student is the unique one, what I want you to do to um, add a uniqueness constraint to this CS diagram is we put a straight line, horizontal line, over the student side of this box of the relationship, okay, over the student role. So um, if it was the other way around, so let's give you another example. So let's say we now have two entities. We have address and student. Okay, and you can see here that the address is not unique. Okay, so we have one address, 6 Queen Street, and there are two different students living at that address. Then when we do the... Um, when we do the CS diagram, we got address, we got um, house, address, um, and then what do we put here? Is occupied by, is occupied by student um, name then what you do is you put the horizontal line above the role that the student is playing. Okay, because the student column is the one that is unique. So that's why you put the pink line here. Now, we also have names for these types of relationships and the first one is where we call many to one. Many to one relationship. And the reason why this is many to one is if you represent this table using a mapping diagram, so if you draw some circles and uh, some arrows, okay, you would see that Edward, Phoebe, Sarah, James, there are four different things on the left, there is only two things on the right, okay, and you have Edward linking to male, Phoebe linking to female, Sarah linking to female, James linking to male, and so on. So many to one represents that there are many things on the left, there are many things on the left, pointing to just one thing on the right, correct? If you look at male, 
For example, there are many things pointing to this one thing. And then if you look at females, for example, there are many things pointing to one thing. So that's why this is called a many to one relationship. And then in this other case, all right, we got one thing here, 6 Queen Street, and then we got many things on the right, John and Emma, and we have John and Emma, many things pointing to one thing. Okay, so that's why this is a uh, this is a one to many, one to many relationship. Okay, so we got many to one, we got one to many. Okay, what about some more? All right, what about some more? I know you're dying to hear some more. So have a look at this. We got students studying subjects, right? We got Edward studying maths, Edward studying English, Sarah studying maths, Sarah studying English. And if you draw this out, okay, if you draw this out and you've got student name studies studies subject name what you're going to do is you're going to put a horizontal bar over both rows in the relationship okay both boxes you're going to put a put a horizontal line uh, without a break in the middle right a solid line the whole way through and this is called a many to many relationship many to many relationship and the reason for that is because both columns have values repeating ed repeats twice sarah repeats twice math repeats twice english repeats twice as well but the combination of them does not repeat okay you can't have ed in math again because that would that wouldn't make sense right so the combination of both values is unique right but um, each individual value could repeat so this is called a many-to-many -many relationship if you're gonna draw a mapping of it it'll look like this uh, math uh, English, so you got many things pointing to Ed. Uh, you got many things pointing to Sarah. You got many things pointing to math. You got many things pointing to English. So it's many to many, many to many. Okay, now one last possibility before you fall asleep. Now, if I want to store some information about the different year levels, so we got 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 in high school, and for each year level, there's a coordinator. Let's put John, Emma, John, let's just put some last names, John, White, Sarah, uh, Sarah, let's put some. names in there um, sorry I just have a just have a mind blank for names right now Brian uh, what else <sighs> really can't think of another name so I'll just put MRK now you can see that this is a one-to-one -one relationship because neither columns have any repeating values 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, all unique. Uh, all the names here are unique. All right, This MR is not the same as this MR because their last names are different. So um, it's a one-to-one -one relationship. So if you're going to represent that on a, um, on a CS diagram, I'm just going to make it very brief. Uh, you would put a solid oh sorry we already done that a straight line 
with a gap in the middle to represent a one-to-one -one relationship. So if you're going to draw it as a mapping, you got 8, 9, 10, and so on, and you got John, Emma, Sarah, and it's a one-to-one -one relationship. Actually, you probably don't need the arrows, but anyway, so that's when um, you draw a line, a straight line with a gap in the middle to signify that none of the values will repeat. So these are all called uniqueness constraints, and you need to put this on on the top of every single relationship. You either put a line on the left, a line on the right, or a solid line, or two lines. Right? You're not allowed to not just have a line. So you can put this on um, in step four. We're going to recap all the steps pretty soon, but we're now up to step four in information analysis. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.